I'm going to show you a tender and juicy pork loin recipe smoked on the Traeger grill. It's going to be fantastic. Stick around. All right, guys, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. If you're new here, my name is Todd. And just like I mentioned tonight, I'm going to show you a beautiful pork loin recipe that I think you'll really like. I've done a lot of research on this. Honestly, I've never done a pork loin before. So I've used multiple sources to come up with a recipe I think is gonna be really out of the park. And I'm gonna show you everything that I do. Now folks, before we get started, be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. That way I upload new videos and you find out about it. Okay guys, here we go. Here's half of what was a pretty long pork loin that uh, Sassy picked up. So we cut it in half, uh, stuck the other half back in the fridge, and this is the one that I get here. So as you can see, it's a pretty lean piece of meat. So in order to get that flavor uh, right on point, I'm gonna use some fresh cloves of garlic and some fresh picked rosemary. And uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting these little holes in here and stuffing it with that. But before I get started with that, you can see there's a bit of a fat cap here. And what that has is some, some silver skin in here that isn't really good eating. It's kind of chewy. It's just not a good eating experience. You can kind of see those fibers, almost like little threads and stuff. So we're gonna take all that out. There we go. So this is about as far as I want to go on the trim. Um, there's just a little bit of fat here. You know, you can see here, this is the one end of the loin here. And I believe these are, uh, this is another muscle here that kind of goes up onto the other part of the loin. There's a little fat vein in between, but I'm not gonna really mess with that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go kind of on a grid pattern here. And uh, I'm gonna take a little skinny knife, in this case, the enough I have and I'm just gonna get that garlic right down in there and I'm gonna take some of this fresh rosemary and put it down in that hole with it guys as you can see here got the uh, rosemary poking out of most of these holes um, that kind of helps uh, keep the garlic into these little slits make sure they're buried all the way in there and uh, you'll be uh, just fine here what we're gonna do is take some of this Dijon mustard I'm gonna do the uh, back side first and just uh, you know as much as you want to do this is gonna definitely add to the flavor and kind of act as a binder for that uh, Uncle Steve's shake. Okay. And speaking of Uncle Steve's shake, today we're gonna be using Gator Shake. I love this stuff. It's got uh, just a nice kind of little kick, like a little uh, citrusy kind of flavor, along with just some great barbecue spices. Um, you guys gotta get you some. Guys, everything I use in this video, there'll be a link down in the description for. Look at that color. Yeah, that's beautiful. Now this is gonna be in the pan on that side, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna go around real gently. Don't forget the sides, guys. Don't forget the sides. Okay. Okay, a little bit more Uncle Steve shake. Alright 
guys. So while that's setting up, I'm gonna let those flavors kind of get all happy with that pork loin now. Now it's time to get the pan ready. So for the vegetables that I'm, I'm gonna be using, we're gonna take a Granny Smith apple, slice it up and put them in the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna put, put the pork loin right on top of it. I got some baby yellow Dutch potatoes and this is how I'm gonna do those. I'm gonna slice them up and I'm gonna microwave them for about eight minutes. I want those things to cook all the way through. Why? Well, they take a long time to cook and no one likes biting into a potato that ain't finished. Now you could boil it in water if you want, but it's gonna get all soggy. So what I'm doing here is I want the outsides to dry out. That way when I put on some extra virgin olive oil, the outside soaks it in and sticks to it a lot better. And I like that little crispy crunch. Okay guys, you can see how I uh, cut them into quarters and again, into the microwave for eight minutes. All right guys, uh, these potatoes came out really good. Um, I, I, I like how they kind of came out dry. Um, they're pretty well cooked through and through, so I'm just gonna dump them into a nice big bowl uh, make sure you get a nice big bowl. It's uh, got plenty of room in here. So the first thing, keeping with the theme of uh, excellent flavor, I'm going to take this extra virgin olive oil. Give it a really good squirt. I'm just going to kind of mix that up a little bit. Okay, now a little bit of salt. Just a touch pepper. That looks pretty good. Okay, be sure to season at every step. That's crucial. And... My secret ingredient, I learned this from uh, Sam the Cooking Guy. A little bit of uh, sweet vermouth, just a touch. Guys, if you're not cooking with sweet vermouth, try it. Trust me, can't go wrong. Then I'm gonna hit it up with a little bit of uh, granulated garlic. California, of course. Notice the theme here, guys. Salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of oil, a little bit of sweet vermouth. Oh man. Okay, now I'm just gonna let that set aside for a minute. I know Sassy loves mushrooms. Got these uh, beautiful, nice, uh, fresh white mushrooms here. I melted down some real Irish butter. Take some coarsely chopped fresh garlic. Make sure I get all of it. There we go. And some chives. Uh, these are dry chives, but uh, once they hit that warm butter, they'll reconstitute. It'll be so delicious. Okay. I've already melted the butter, but I'm just going to warm it up again. Now, I'm going to throw them in here with the mushrooms. And again, have a nice big bowl. You can really mix that stuff around. There we go. All right, guys, here we go. So first thing I like to do, is put in the potatoes first. Okay. Oh, this smells amazing, let me tell you. Okay. And any of those extra drippings, just kind of drip them around. There you go. Maybe a little bit of salt, a little bit more salt there. Okay. Now the mushrooms. Well, there's not as many mushrooms, so I'm just going to kind of lay them in there strategically, strategery. And I keep saying this, guys, but man, if you had smell o vision you would love this. Oh, there we go. I know Sassy is going to love these mushrooms. Wow, oh, that baby. Looks, that looks pretty. Yeah. Looks great. Okay, and then... Got a little bit of this left over, so I'm just gonna go right up the middle there. Don't wanna waste any of this. Wow, that looks delicious. Give it one more hit of this Uncle Steve's, because you can't have enough Uncle Steve's shake. There we go. And trust me, this gator shake is not strong. It is just right. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this sweet vermouth in here just to kind of give it a little bit of moisture. I don't want to wash off all that seasoning, but uh, there we go. 
Look at that, guys. What do you think? Oh, yeah. All right, guys, what do you think about that dish? Now, I call it, that's yeah, actually a pan. And this thing's ready to go in the Traeger. I've already preheated the Traeger to about 425. I'm hoping for 450. You know, my particular model, the little Tex, you know, it has a hard time reaching 450. But uh, with my trusty Thermo Pro TP19, I'm going to be monitoring that temperature every once in a while. It's not going to take long. I'm thinking about 20 or 30 minutes. 140, 145, I'm taking it off. It's going to go probably another five degrees because I'm going to tent it for about 20 minutes and then we're going to cut into it. All right, guys, I'm not going to look at it for at least 20 minutes. And when I do, I'm hoping it will be right around 140 or so. Uh, if not, uh, it shouldn't be that far away. And then we'll take it out, let it rest. All right, some of you guys might have asked, hey, why didn't Todd sear that thing in a cast iron skillet and give it some little sear or some color? Well, I want to give the Traeger every opportunity it can to get some smoke into that uh, pork loin. So I'm going to have the oven ready to go on full broil. And when that comes off at about 140, I'm going to put it under that broiler here for a couple minutes and get that top sear, and then I'm going to let it rest. Might be a while before this is done, so I'm going to take some of this uh, duck fat and just kind of get it on them mushrooms so they don't dry out. All right, guys. Good. I think it uh, came out nicely. Go to waste. It's beautiful. It's been resting for about 15 minutes. Yeah, a shot of that. It's good. Okay. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right about here and give you guys a look. Yeah, look at that. All right. I'm not sure if you can see that. A little juicy. Okay. You can see that garlic right there. I'm not going to cut the whole thing, okay? That's a mistake. You don't want to cut the whole thing because uh, if you do, the juices come out of it. All right, guys, I'm going in. Actually, I already went in. I chewed. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, man. You know, the garlic, the rosemary, the Uncle Steve's shake, the aromatics, you know, that's the key right there. Use spices that have a lot of aromatics. Because, uh, again, pork loin, really lean piece of meat. It's not a lot of fat, so you got to really punch it with that flavor. Mm. Let me try to get you a good look at one of these mushrooms. Mushrooms came out great. That... That real Irish butter, the garlic, and the chives. Oh man. Mm. And of course, the duck fat that I sprayed on there. Mm. And we can't forget the potatoes. Mm. I think if I would have done it again, I might have blanched the garlic before I put it in there. Kind of give them a head start because the garlic just barely gets cooked by the time it's ready to come off the uh, grill. So uh, blanching them a little bit will help along. And uh, other than that, I think it came out great. Uh, the flavors are all there. Mm. What do you think, baby? So we got the approval from the Sassy Kitchen Queen. Mmm. Mmm. God. 
I'm not usually a big pork fan except bacon. And man, now this recipe, you know, if you would have wrapped it with bacon, that would have been low. All right, guys, hey, thanks for watching. Again, everything that we use in this video is available down in the description. Be sure to hit me up in the comments. Tell me what you think, how you do it different. What's your favorite way to do pork loin? And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Mm.